Okay, so you've got this piece, and you're saying, wow, I really like that. What made you buy it? Uh, well, the baskets tend to resell really well. Baskets tend to resell very well. Huh, people like baskets? Even baskets where they're falling apart a little bit? Oh, yeah. Even baskets where they have a native wood base that has been actually, that has been actually woven into the basket? So it's not going to move much, right? Even the bottom looks really good. Look at that color. That's what you're looking for for age. You're looking for that distinctive color, right? That's years and years and years of sitting in the same place. Every once in a while, somebody takes a rag and starts to get the, the little cobwebs and the dust off the bottom. But this piece sat in a, in a particular same place for a particularly long time. It sat in a place that has some water, a relatively tropical environment. Not Houston. <laughs> a little more tropical than that. This particular piece is a nice piece for a couple of reasons. Would it be used for what? Uh, I've been used for collecting uh, food in a field or berries. Or... It's typically a storage piece where you would actually have it. You could actually wear it on your back like a backpack, right? You can put something in it, usually a crop from a field and walk it back to a main house. It has that area, that base area, which is made of a stronger material, a native wood, because you want to be able to put that in an environment where if there was water coming in that environment outside on a stoop or something, that you can actually place that there and nothing would happen to the, ob to the actual materials or the food stuff inside. Protective, it's great. It keeps all of the um, basket woven material off the ground. So bugs can't get to it as easily, and it can't get wet and damaged. Value on that, oh, time period for that piece. That piece probably dates sometime between 1850 and 1870, and value on that piece, which is Asian, obviously, value on that piece is going to be anywhere between 85 and 100 bucks. What did you pay? Uh, 20. 20. So you got it for a quarter of what it's really worth, or actually a fifth of what it's really worth. That's nice. What's it made of? You got it as an estate sale? It is an engraved image of the Taj Mahal. That's what it is. That's what it is. So it has inlaid abalone, inlaid jade, inlaid marquetry. This particular element, that's the side I'm looking at. Just a second, I'll do that again. This particular element is nephrite or white jade. And this particular element shows you, of course, the architectural structure. It's a presentation platter. It's basically for you did something great and we want to give you this gift. So you remember. It's that stuff that just collects dust. You know, you get an award and you put it on the shelf and you're like, it's collecting dust because are you really going to put it out and show everybody, I did this great thing. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> How'd you acquire it in estate sales? Did you pay more than $150 for it? No. It's worth about $150. It's nice. Um, it is all inlaid. So all of this workmanship is relatively difficult to do. It dates to about 1925. OK is right. That's a nice piece. So tell me, Susie, what did you bring? That, that print right there I got at an estate sale in 1982. An estate sale? Yeah. Just a yard sale where the owner's the not around anymore to make change. Yep. Estate sales, <laughs> right? So basically, you, know, you got that joke, right? The rest of them, not so fast. <laughs> But you got that joke. And that's true. Don't think an estate sale is so great just because they call it an estate sale. I always think those people are too lazy to even schlep everything out to the lawn and call it a yard sale. <laughs> an estate sale. But you got it in an estate sale. Pretty nice piece. European. It's damaged, significantly damaged. Why? You see the brown haze? Brown haze all the way around the window of the mat. That's very common because this piece is framed prior to us having acid-free matte materials. So that's going to happen to everything that's pre put in a frame before 1983. This particular piece is, has a dust screen on the back. That's what this piece of paper is. And underneath this piece of paper, based on my years of experience in major museums at big universities and appraising 20,000 objects a year for the last 20 years at public and private events and in people's homes, this particular piece underneath it, I know that there's cardboard underneath here. It's corrugated cardboard, and this piece was put into this frame sometime around the 1920s. The print is from the early part of the 1900s. 
between 1900 and 1925. And that's based on the type of print process. So what kind of print that it is. It's a hand colored lithograph, right? So this particular piece is a good example. Now I'm looking at what is a hand colored lithograph. It does not have a consistent dot pattern. Dot, 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 dot. The way you can pattern things. Like an Indianapolis concrete. Can't you make a pattern into concrete? Can't you stamp it and make it look good? Can you make it a different color too? Make it a different color. They can do all kinds of stuff. The travertine patio paver people, they can get all different colors that goes along with what you need. This particular piece dates to about 1900, made in Europe. Now, it's signed here on the bottom. I'll use my five, oh, it says Van Eyck. Well, it's not that Van Eyck. If you know, there is an artist named Van Eyck who was active in the late 14, early 1500s. That's not him. This is somebody else, a long, long, long younger relative. Not really. But Van Eyck indicates the piece is probably Flemish or Dutch, the Netherlands, Holland, right, or Flanders. It used to be called Flanders. When I was teaching at Penn State, my students was, used to say, where's Flanders? And are people from Flanders from Flem? No, it has nothing to do with Flem. <laughs> Flanders is present day Belgium. Belgian piece, landscape, hand colored lithograph, circa 1900, value on it about $125. Was it worth the drive? Yes. So far, so good. <laughs> Thank you very much, Susan. Grandkids? 14 grandkids. 14. 12 or 14, they're not sure, but they'll take the extra two. They don't care. They seem like a nice family. Maria Jose, nice to meet you guys. How did you acquire this? This piece is stapled to this particular canvas. This piece is made after 1955. What do you know about the artist? Not much. You bought it at an estate sale? OK. This is, an, this is a Japanese artist who is painting an, an Italian scene. Maybe you got to take Maria to Venice. Get in the gondola. You can have a couple of more kids. <laughs> You're young, what the heck? The 14, year old, the 14 of the grandkids could take care of the little one. Anyway, this is called palette knife. This element here is palette knife, right? So really, really thick application of paint. There's a little bit of a problem here with composition. You see this? This is a way in which artists will basically grid out their painting. It helps them to understand perspective. So if you were a little tiny ant and you put yourself here, if you go on those diagonal lines, you believe that that ant can move from this spot to that spot. Perspective, very hard to do because what you're doing is you're trying, the artist is trying to in fact convince you that what you have is really a three dimensional space, but they're painting it in two dimensions. Make sense? Yeah, that's basically what you're doing. So the grid is actually a, a clue, a trick, a help, a guide for all of us. Our eyes will actually move from left to right, upper left to lower right, which is why they usually sign their name, lower right. And then when you're looking at a painting and you see framers, vertical lines, those are vertical framers. They stop your eye within a spot, like a frame around your head. A diagonal line will direct your eye, and a horizontal line will tell your eye where to rest, like on the horizon, right? Value on your piece? About $150 in this condition. It dates between 1965 and 1985. Nice to meet you, Jose and Maria.